What is up, everyone? Welcome back. Joe Everest, the fence expert. If you've watched this channel for any length of time, you know what we're getting ready to do. Jeremy has scoured YouTube and found yet another video that he thinks that I'll enjoy watching and that you might enjoy watching my reaction to. This one's titled, Installing a No-Dig Privacy Fence Crazy Fast. This is intriguing. So the no-dig thing, everyone's trying to figure that out, right? Because speed and efficiency... I get it. We've tried it. I, I'm going to take a guess that this has to do with driving fence posts. Uh, that's just about the only way I think you can uh, install a fence without digging. I'm interested to see how they do it. We've tried driving uh, fence posts here in south southwest Missouri. I'll say that a few times fast. And, uh, man, they're just, there's too much rock. We end up getting rejection six or eight inches down and just, anyway. Without further ado... Let's figure out Hacksman's solution for installing a no-dig privacy fence crazy fast. Here we go. All right, guys. As I said, installing a no-dig privacy fence crazy fast by the Hacksman. We'll be linking this video in the description below. So if you'd like to watch it without my running commentary and feedback, you'll be able to do so. Also, check out the Hacksman channel. Uh, seems like he's got 141,000 subscribers, so he's up to something pretty fancy. I, I like this disclaimer. Purpose of the video is to inspire you to come up with your own ideas. Safety is your responsibility. Just because you do something stupid doesn't mean you should. Fair. Today, I'm going to be installing a six-foot privacy hey. fence, but not just any privacy fence. We know this guy. That's Mark Olson. Check him out. This is going to be a no-dig privacy fence. And the reason I'm able to do that is because today I have with me Mark from SWI Fence. Mark, tell us a little bit about yourself. So when was this? Oh, this was done July this year. Mark also has a successful contractor page. Moved down to Florida, starting over, creating a whole new fence company. We're actually going to have him. We've got him scheduled to come on an upcoming live Q&A. Maybe we'll see if he can watch this video during the live, Inception style. Anyway, I am even more excited to see this now that we know that Mark's involved. I have a company. My brother and I have a company out in Wyoming. We're SWI Fence and Supply and soon to be St. Augustine, Florida as well. We're going to show oh, Adam go. how to build a fence without having to dig any holes, which is what everybody wants to do because the holes are the absolute worst part. So we're going to show right. you how to avoid that. The majority of the labor cost in building a fence, well over half, is in digging those digging those holes. I came here from Wyoming. Did you, did you fly down or did you drive down? I flew. So are your arms tired? Yeah. <laughs> it's just beginning, folks. As a dad, I can appreciate this joke. So what are Axe these man, for? I like that name. Uh, so this is a spacing jig. It's actually made by Mr. Fence Tools. That looks like the equalizer. It'll help us get all your posts proportionally spaced so that we don't have any sections at the end that are, you know, two foot long or four foot long so that they're all exactly equal. Oh, okay. But, yeah, we have, don't exceed. That equalizer tool is pretty slick. Um, so Sean King, Mr. Fence, created it. And I absolutely love it. We did a video a little while ago using it, just kind of showing the use of it how it can proportionally space posts at an eight foot maximum uh, post spacing, but it's a bungee style cord. So as you relax it, it actually brings each and every post a little bit closer. So say your post spacing is seven foot, eight and a quarter inches or something like that on center. Uh, by relaxing it, it automatically readjusts every hole. So you don't have to measure and mark every single one. Eight foot maximum spacing for our rails. I totally approve of uh, Kubota tractors only because of the color. I have no idea if they're actually better than any other tractors, but I do like them because they're orange. Yeah, those look like Postmaster Plus posts. So this... So you know they're Postmaster Plus posts because they've got twice as many holes, at least twice as many holes, in the uprights. The original Postmasters, there's other things you can look at. The top hat width is a little bit wider in a Postmaster Plus post, uh, but mainly uh, it's got a ton more holes. Now, why Postmaster Plus instead of Postmaster? Um, I'm sure Master Halco has a lot of reasons um, for increasing it. Mainly, their patent was running out. Uh, their patent has run out on the Postmaster, which is why now you see lifetime posts, all these other posts that look a little bit different than the Postmaster posts. But 
the Postmaster, Postmaster Plus, they're the original, they're the OG, and they're the one that we prefer to use. This is the bottom. Okay. And Not we'll necessarily. The bottom. This is the bottom because if you were going to set this in concrete, your concrete would lock in. I do like that feature too. So as Mark's explaining, it locks that post into the concrete. The concrete comes in through the hole all, all around this post. So that There's no way that post is coming out. Because some of the feedback I'm sure that they got was it's a straight post. It could get just pulled straight out of the concrete. Concrete itself does shrink over time. And we're talking about long time. A post does shrink. So theoretically, could you pull it out? I'm sure. Have I ever pulled a post out of the concrete? I have not. As a kid, when we were removing posts, I would have loved to see a post slide out of the concrete. I mean, my job before I, before I got promoted onto the installation crew was I was a kid that had a sledgehammer knocking concrete off a post so we could take it into the scrapyard because the scrapyard does not accept concrete. So anyway, the hole locks that post into the concrete, so it will not slip out. These holes uh, a little yeah. bit, and we also don't have holes drilled all the way down. So these holes are where we'll makes sense because you're not gonna you're not gonna attach a two before uh, below grade. Attach our rails now. There's two different ways. There is a lively debate anywhere you go on Facebook of which way you're supposed to put these in. The manufacturer has us running the two by fours here, and that's what the way they're designed. But you'll have a lot of people that put them on. Let's say our our good side was going to be this side. And they'll have, they'll run the two by fours on this face rather than this face, which leaves the post exposed, and so you can see the post. And and some guys will uh, attach a picket on the other side so it still hides the post. Problem is then it leaves a gap of you know whatever the the width of or the depth of that top hat is. So it's made for two by four, so inch and a half, two inches, something like that. I think it's probably closer to an inch and a half. It leaves that gap between that cover picket and the fence. I'm not a fan of installing it, uh, contrary to manufacturer, uh, how the manufacturers say to. One reason, and this hasn't come up that I know of, but you got to think that these posts are warrantied, right? So they come with a lifetime warranty against rust and corrosion, also wind damage up to, I believe, 72 miles an hour. You'll want to check that on their website. I almost wonder if the fence was installed backwards with the finish side facing away from that top hat if that affects the warranty. I don't know, but I'd say play it safe and install it per uh, manufacturer specifications. The reason they're doing that is because they can screw their rails on, run their rails long, and then just come with the skill saw and run mm. right up this channel and chop them off without having to do any measuring. And the ones I've seen that do that also use a 16 foot two by four. So saving a little bit of labor. And, and the argument is it also builds a stronger fence because you can overlap those joints so 16 foot two before is the reasoning I've seen guys use that again. I don't know what it does to the warranty. Play it safe. Follow the uh, manufacturer's guidance on that. When we turn the post this way, if this is going to be our privacy side, we have to measure precisely. We want to make sure that all the rails fit precisely inside this channel. But now it's important to note Mark's wearing safety gloves. When you're messing with these posts, you absolutely have to wear gloves. The edges are almost razor sharp. I've seen I've seen firsthand a guy think that he didn't have to wear gloves when he handled these things. He's used them for years. Didn't have his gloves on him, whatever the reason. He absolutely laid his hand open uh, handling one of these posts. It slipped, and it just absolutely cut right down the palm of his hand. It was... Please wear gloves when you're handling these things. The nice thing is, on the back side, we can cover that up with the picket and never see that post. I don't know if you told us or not. These are called Postmaster Posts, right? Yeah, these are Postmaster Posts from Master Halco. We sell a ton of these. We ship them all over the country, believe it or not. They're actually who uh, we refer to when people ask us where they can buy them. Uh, we typically link to SWI's site. Um, shipping's a little high on them. The price of the post includes the price of shipping. Uh, shipping's basically as much as the posts are. Yeah, if you want to find these posts, I'll have a link in the description to Mark's website where he sells them. I mean, these things are like major heavy duty. Yeah, these are nice, and they're they're engineered for wind, and that's why we use them in Wyoming is because if you've ever been out there on I-80 in the wintertime, you know what kind of wind we get. It just blows. So we're going to drive these into the ground. That's correct. And how are we going to do – okay, wait, don't, don't tell me how we're going to do that. Okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 
ladder, and a hammer. I like the theme of this. It seems like Haxman here really enjoys the color orange. I get on board with that. Huh? Uh, no, I like the bucket. It's orange, it's definitely safety rated. That means it's OSHA approved, but we're gonna have to do better than the hammer. Oh, okay, hold on. Hold on. Not OSHA. Sledgehammer, sledgehammer, right? Huh? We're getting warmer. Clearly you haven't watched the channel enough. I don't like to work that hard. We've gotta do better. Hold on, hold on. Mega heavy duty post pounder. Yes. <laughs> no. This is what we'll use for this project. We're gonna be using the Rhino XBD. Oh, hang on. The Rhino. What the heck is it? <laughs> okay. We're gonna be using the Rhino Multi Pro XA, which stands for extended anvil. And this is the only pounder that Rhino makes that will drive the Postmaster Post. We actually have that exact setup, oddly enough, purchased from Mark and SWI. Uh, really solidly built. Unfortunately, in our area, we tried it. We tried it on four yards, five yards, and over the half, over half the post rejected just because we've got a lot of rock in our area. Uh, but if you're in an area where driving a post is, uh, it does work, this is absolutely the driver you should check out. Do you have any gas? Uh, well, not till usually like uh, an hour after lunch or so. No, gas. Oh, gasoline. Yeah, I go, I'll go get that. Now this is a tricky part because that post driver isn't light. I mean, it's not super heavy, but you're lifting this thing for a six foot fence. You typically use a nine foot post if you're driving it. Uh, six inches deeper than setting is kind of the rule of thumb. So, you know, if ASTM calls for a 30 inch hole, it's a 36 inch driving hole. So you'd need one that's at least nine foot. Uh, Postmaster or Master Halco sells Postmaster Plus posts that are nine foot. Sometimes, more often than not, they're ten foot. So you're going to put that driver ten foot in the air and then put that post exactly where you need it. A little tricky. When you can drive them, it's nice. They can go in pretty quickly. We've got the cardboard here, and the reason that we're putting cardboard is I want to be just a little bit off these posts. That way, I don't need to be right up against the string line with all the next posts, because what can happen is the post can move just a little bit one way or another. And we'll make sure the tops are in line, which is what your eye is going to see. Mm -hmm. But if the bottom's out just a little bit, it's not that big a deal. And what I don't want to have happen is, is for every post to just slightly push the string, and then all of a sudden we have a big curve or at the end of the string. So our version of this is we would actually bring that string line out six inches. Uh, so find find out find the property line. So we'd have space we'd have six inches of spacing between that string line and the post. Now six inches because we're drilling the post. We don't want the drill bit to get into or the auger to get into the string line. We also don't want guys moving it with their legs because then as they bring it back, maybe it doesn't snap directly uh, right back to where it's going. But if you're driving the post, I can see this working. You could work with a lot lot tighter tolerances. There you go. We're off by two inches because each one of them pushed it just mm -hmm. a little bit. So okay. if we just set our post up uh, about a quarter of an inch off the string the whole time, we'll be in good shape. Cool. You just went down this whole line, made sure that it was, what, six inches? and transition six inches above the ground, basically? Six to eight inches above the ground. What we're looking for is about a two inch above height. That gives you a little room to weed eat underneath or something like that, or put your mulch down. So we've set the string anywhere from six to eight inches above grade with a nice transition right down there where it's kind of, they got that low spot. And then he's gonna mark all these posts at 60 inches high. 
which should leave us a minimum of five foot six out of the ground, which is what we want. Okay. It's almost easier if I just put the end for you and let you stand it up. Okay. You say when. Yeah, go. Drive it like you stole it. What I would give to live somewhere where you could drive posts like this, that this would change the way we build fence forever. So if this was a production crew, I mean, you could have another couple guys following your drivers that are putting up rails and then another couple guys running pickets. I mean, you could really turn this into a high production operation for sure if you could drive them. Can we talk privately here for just a second, even though this is Adam's channel, and talk about how the hacks man, like, hacked it up. Totally hacked it up, I don't know if it was him or the other guy, but sometimes you let the monkeys run the zoo. Things like this happen. <laughs> this is the bottom because if you were gonna set this in concrete, your concrete would lock into these holes. Uh, now, we can recover because one of our sayings is we identify, we adapt, and we overcome. So what we're gonna do is just drill a couple holes in here. This is not gonna be a big deal. We'll face this over. You'll never see it. It'll all be okay. I shouldn't be ahead of these guys. I'm ahead of them cutting all the boards and packing them. So I'm the pack mule. All they got to do is screw them into place after I pack them over and they're running way behind. I got I got the bit so that I can go ahead and drill out where you put this post in upside down. I, d don't even. We'll go ahead and drill this out and fix this. Be sure to cut this out when, you, when we edit the video. Though, We've already one. talked about this. Uh, you were not here. Oh, while I'm gone. We don't want to make the pro look bad. Unfortunately, so. I'm not the one editing the video. <laughs> In my drill video, people were like, you stupid idiot. You didn't tighten the chuck right. Okay, so I'm going to tighten it. I'm going to tighten it by hand. And then I'm going to do one reverse. Now my ch my chuck is locked. Uh, I don't want to hear anything. If there's one common thread, it's... Uh, the comment section sometimes um, can be filled with all kinds of people. Takes all kinds. Oh, look at there. It stayed. Yeah, we're building fence here in Georgia. We're showing people how you don't dig holes to build cedar fence. One thing that makes this go a little bit quicker is that, can you see these marks? See how there's marks every so often on these postmaster posts? And so I can come down here and I can get that mark right there. And all I have to do is line that up on there and that's a time saver. So one thing we do, um, so when we're building fences on in a production crew, we actually have a couple jigs made that will hang off the top two by four with arms or holding hands uh, at your middle and bottom rail. Once you get your top set, the middle and bottom rail are at predetermined lengths, right? So now it takes a little bit of time to get your top top rail lined out, but you run that one first anyway, just to make sure that your top line looks nice. And then you can just you can put the jigs up to hold the middle and the bottom rail in, so you can have one guy doing this process instead of two. 
so that you can be building two bays of fence with two guys at a time. I know we don't know each other well, and I don't have his permission to be talking to you directly, but I'm going to do that because I feel like what I'm going to get is a whole bunch of criticism from the setup here. Please understand that I'm trying to replicate what you may have at your own house with bare minimal tools. And so, because uh, what you're going to be asking yourself is why is that poor fat old man doing all this work on the ground like that rather than on a bench. But I want to show you the wrong way to do it so you have a better idea of probably the proper way. Mm -hmm. um, so now that you know the wrong way, we'll finish this job out the wrong way. And the next time we come over here to Adam's house and do another fence, we'll do it the right way. Was he making fun of me over there? Or was, was he self was he self deprecating? Did you just deprecate in my yard, dude? I, I took some they might have had a couple posts. And stuff. Okay, okay, don't be deprecating in my yard. That's disgusting. Easy to do. So we haven't really been working all that hard, and I have substandard help. But we, in three hours, probably roughly about three hours, and one trip to Lowe's. Yeah, because um, you forgot the screws. Oh, was that me? Yeah. I was on screws. And then we were almost about to check out, and we had to go back because you were going to get half the amount of screws we needed. We were still in the aisle. We are in the aisle. But on the Anyhow, this represents about three hours worth of work here, laying everything out, driving all the posts, measuring everything with the equalizer, and really, once we get all these stringers up, we're probably only looking at maybe another hour-ish, hour and half maybe, to finish this thing out. Yes. Yeah, we'll show you some other tricks to finish that up. It's actually been extremely easy. And the, the biggest issue we've had is just the sun, just the heat. That's it. I didn't think it was that bad. Oh, because you, you were, you were. Oh, we're Wyoming. We're you used were crying to, earlier. You took Advil. No. We're, we're you were crying up earlier. Up in Wyoming, but... we're used to the heat. We can handle the humidity. Oh, it's the humidity. It's it was the humidity. It's never the heat, it's the humidity. Yeah. He was very sad earlier. He's downtrodden. Look at that fence. Look at it. Look at it. Look at that sweep down there. The gentle sweep as it comes down the land. Looks beautiful. I love it. 15 hours later. How far did we how far did we set that in? Three and a half feet. Three and a half, so that's three and a half feet. So those are nine foot posts and we just drove it three and a half feet. So the next question everybody wants to know is, is this really gonna stand up? Because what did you have roll through here a couple days ago? A little hurricane? Yeah, a little well, tropical storm. It was Close upgraded. It was upgraded. Oh, okay. Yeah, hurricane. Elsa. We'll call it a hurricane. Or was it a blizzard with a name like Elsa? Yeah. That's probably a blizzard. Let's eat on it a little bit. See eat. if you can pull it up. See if you can pull it up. Oh yeah, no, I'm not gonna be able to pull this thing up. No. I can definitely. do that without gloves. Let me get a shot. Okay, you got this. Yeah. Here we go. You're a little stocky. You got gloves. That's cheating. By the power of Grace <laughs> No, that's not good. Okay. We gotta see if we can. Okay, now we're fine. Now we can see if we can get this thing up. So we did not ruin the ground. And this is nice sandy ground too. Mm -hmm. So this is about as easy a ground as you can get. If you have heavy clay or something like that, it's gonna give even less. Mm -hmm. It's so heavy. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, another quarter of an inch. Whew. Don't pass out. Don't get lightheaded on me. Okay. Half inch. Yep. Only like three feet, four to go. We got this. Yeah. Okay. That's like a good inch and a half. Yeah, it was. Don't I don't like how close I am to your crotch. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Uh, we have abused it. So the point is the ground didn't give way and all of a sudden we were able to pull this thing out. Yeah. Now, in full disclosure, we did cheat and we used a driver that cost about $3,000. But somebody, if they did want to do this, then they could rent one of those. Um, some people can rent those locally and stuff. You know, obviously we sell them if you're a professional, but mm -hmm. yeah, some rental stores carry those and maybe you can talk to a rental store and get them to. So rental stores will have drivers. Uh, one thing we found 
we thought about renting one to to test this out, right? But the problem is the head. It takes a specific head to fit inside that top hat of the Postmaster Plus post and the Postmaster post. Um, we couldn't find any that had that municipal driver head on it. Um, so we ended up buying one. If you know anyone that needs one, we've got one that's uh, barely used. Pick one up, so... Didn't tilt it back. There's a heavy load upon my back. No way to throw it up. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna build a sacrificial picket that we use for getting all of our heights cracked. And we'll use that in conjunction with our uh, bump board. And so we're just, what we're gonna do is we're looking for a six inch reveal. So we measure down six inches and nail on a block. When you do this, okay, come over here. Make sure you support it well before he shoots the nail in. Okay, go ahead. Just kidding. I'm kidding. Don't do that. He <laughs> got me. I was sitting here. I was like, Ooh. okay, go ahead. Now, you because I've seen Mark do some crazy stuff like that. He got me. You can go. I do not want a shot in the hand. I need two of them. Like one that run there and one there. Now we can set it there and we don't have to risk it falling off. It'll never fall off. Just to add it, because I'm all about safety. I know, I get that from you. I've gotten that. That's a nice touch. That way he has a consistent reveal uh, down the entire line. Nice touch. This whole process. World champion. World champion. All the way from Wyoming. You show us how to miss two by fours all day long. Yep. Kate Olson. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ladies, he is not taken. He probably <laughs> still thinks you're gross, actually. Oh my gosh. Icky. 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 <laughs> you can put them all in if you want. Oh, okay. It's, if you want to do that. So, as you'll notice on this, we're using the bump board, and this is a specially designed bump board you can find at SWIFence.com. The reason we like this is it's because it's got enough weight. When you bump up against it, it takes a lot of force to actually raise it, which you want. Most people would use a string for this. We're not using string, but instead we're going from post to post. Now what we don't want to do when we use this is extend it out like this, because if we do have a roll, it'll screw up our roll. So we want to make sure that this is basically going between posts and only between posts. We can extend it out maybe one picket past the post, and then that's it. And then we need to do exactly what we're gonna do here, transition it, sit it down like this, and then keep going. But it takes a lot of force, so I can tell when I'm lifting this up, as opposed to a string where it takes a lot more time and finesse. I can quickly reach over here, grab boards, slide them up under there, and I can feel real fast where that, where that picket needs to be, so I'm getting them very consistent. The other thing we do is every once in a while, or when we come to a post, we just make sure our pickets are even with the post and correct for plumb if we need to. What are you looking at, my shoes? Really? They are bright. I'm talking up here. This is where all the important stuff's happening, not down here. Anyhow, so uh, what you'll find is that if you don't watch for your plumb as you're doing these pickets, they'll kind of, the bottom will end up working this way, the direction of travel that we're going. So every once in a while, I want to pull just a little bit of a big gap in here at the top, and that'll help keep us plumb, and we can see that when we cross a post, whether or not it's straight up and down with our post, and correct that as we go. So makes it super fast and super easy. Ready? I'm ready. mentioned normally this side will be the side facing the inside of your yard but we've got an unusual situation out here where nobody really sees this so we flipped it the other way but now we got these posts back here so what do we do about that how do we cover these up magic 
like you've already prepared one. Look, ready. magically we, one has been prepared for us. We have magically prepared it. So all we're gonna do is we use our block because it's the same height as the fence, and then. We're now, since they drove them, they drove them to depth where the top of that post works out perfectly to where the top of that 2x4 is. Typically, what we would do is we would just run a bandsaw, a battery-powered bandsaw, along the top of that 2x4, use it as a guide to cut those posts. I like it when the posts are cut at the same height as the 2x4. I also like the way Mark's doing it to where the picket reveal matches the fence's picket reveal on the other side. Another way of doing it would be to cut that picket shorter to where it matches the top height of the 2 by 4 I can understand why it's done that way. One guy's opinion, I prefer to see it done the way Mark's doing it, where the picket reveal or the post cover reveal matches the fence picket reveal. We're very, very careful. <laughs> Cade's going to show you what a professional nailer he is. Boom. That was, that was touch and go on that one. There you go. We have to stay right on the edge of the board, just barely get it. Oh. That's what we'll, we'll edit it out. Okay. No, we won't. No, we won't. We don't edit that stuff out. <laughs> this is a good looking fence. And that, friends, is how you build a no dig privacy fence. I will put links in the description and you need to go check out Mark's channel, SWI Fence, because it's not just about fencing. I mean, it is about fencing, but y'all do a lot of fun, kind of crazy stuff on there too. We do, we like to test things. Yeah, even if you don't care about fencing, you'll still be amused by watching that channel. I'll put all those links. Mark, okay, thanks for coming and helping me do this. Well guys, let me know what you think. I think if you're in an area that you can drive post, I absolutely think you should look into doing that. If we lived in an area where we could drive posts consistently and uh, reliably, we would change how we install fencing, period. I think this is the way that the industry is moving. If you're in an area that you can drive posts consistently, like say in our area, for whatever reason, there's too many rocks, it's too large of rocks, it just won't. We can't consistently plan on doing this every yard. So uh, anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. I always like hearing from you guys. What would you have done differently? I'd also like to hear that. We can all learn together. But until next time, I'm Joe Everest, a fence expert, reminding you the good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.